last week um, I needed to call my mobile operator to cancel a subscription for my daughter. She moved to Australia and for a year and we, she don't need the local, lo local mobile subscription for that. And I was thinking that um, this is a handy, handy thing to handle it with the chat. So you know that there is a chat in every web page currently and you can, you can talk, to, talk to the customer service through that. And uh, I was talking to Lena there and explaining the situation that I want to either cancel or to downgrade the, the subscription for a year. And she asked a lot of questions for me, like uh, where, I, where do I live and what mo mobile number do I want to cancel? And, uh, and then she was really unsure about this downgrading that, you know, how, how the downgrading should work and asked further questions. Uh, and then happened what happens, I wasn't, I was traveling, so I lost the internet connection, I lost the chat, so that was interrupted. And I was like, okay. I, I need to, to start over with this chat. And, uh, on I picked up the phone and, you know, I called the customer service instead. Let's do it the old way. Um, um, Janne replied to me there and he, uh, he was really helpful and, and uh, trying to assist me through the same thing, asking the same questions again. And I was going through the same questions. Uh, where do I live and what number do I want to cancel and, and you know, that left me thinking that, you know, we are, we are preparing a talk for a conference about uh, collaborative user interface and, and what kind of uh, experience they could bring to the end user. And I was really like, now I'm an end user. Now I have this situation that, you know, it would be really handy if they would know about each other somehow. Maybe they could even ask their, each other about what I was explaining there. And uh, so I don't need to do it all over again. Um, and that's how we arrived here. So I know Leif has been giving a talk about multiplayer app enterprise applications before, so he knows quite a lot about these things. I don't know so much, but I have a lot of ideas how this could be improved, so. Yep, so I, I prepared a demo. We looked at it with some yesterday, and then last night I changed it all over. So he doesn't know what's coming up, but we'll We'll figure it out, I hope. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so let's see. Never been in this spot before, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, yeah, so the first thing in this kind of situation like uh, would be that it would be nice that they even know about each other. Like we were doing the presentation. We know that we are doing the same presentation at the same time, so there is a presence. Uh, presence indicator that uh, Leif is also here, uh, uh, so I need to pay attention that maybe he is doing something for my for my presentation at the moment. Uh, yeah. So we could have something like this in any applications, or yeah, I, that's exactly the case. Okay. Yeah. I'm so happy that you brought <laughs> up this. How, how could it be that he found exactly this use case? <coughs> so w we got this application going on. Yeah, Did let's see. Let's see. Let's yeah, go there. That's where, that's where we have it. So actually here we are now. Actually, did we get it the right way? No. This we, is we, we should switch the ordering because I'm standing on this side and for them it looks the opposite, of course. Of course. So let's switch yeah. the order like this. Yes. You can drag the okay. windows. Yeah. So basically what we have here is kind of the same application running. So far we haven't made it in any way kind of multiplayer so that things stay in sync. But you can see my screen, I can kind of open on one of the contacts. This is a very simple kind of CRM application where you edit contacts. I can edit it and make some changes like put some number there or whatever. And then maybe if you now open this, the first, first one, there, then you also see that, well, it's, it's actually kind of, it's the same application because my edits were yeah, visible there. Exactly. I can see your edits here. Yeah. <coughs> but throughout we will kind of see how what things look like from my point of view, what things look like from Sammy's point of view, but it, it's all going to be just this, basically this view about how we edit this, this single, uh, single entity. So the first thing we had there is, we want to see kind of, I want to see, oh, Sammy also has this open, so maybe we should coordinate instead of just overwriting each other's changes and so on. There, there is some code that I haven't seen before, so 
So let's let's yeah. go through this. So what do we have here? So we have a contact panel. That's contact that panel. That's that's the main class that we'll be making most of the changes in. And it's okay. A, it's a void in view. It's got a bunch of text fields. Marcus, yeah, could we make it? You have you have trouble. <coughs> so let's. There is probably a tomb here somewhere. Command pass. That didn't work. Oh yeah, well you, sh you should use Eclipse instead. It works Appearance. in Eclipse. It's in the settings. <coughs> it's in the settings. Uh, it's just slightly better. It's working. Good. Can you see it? Yeah. Marcus doesn't complain anymore at least. No. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, well anyways, it's, it's a very simple form. It's got like you see there on the bottom, text fields for the name and email and, and uh, phone and things. And then we got... Uh, well so we're we using const binder here. Constructor setting things up with binder, adding some click listeners. We got a little bit of logic here because, because switching between kind of read-only mode for just previewing and then actually toggling all the fields to be not read-only mode. Uh, and well, that's about it. Putting everything into a form laid out and... and that's it to make it very simple. So, so that's so what it's we basi there. basically this. So we have yeah. the form layout and the edit button. Yep. So All right. So the we, we want to make it so that when when I open this and somebody already has it has it open, then he can see that I'm already there. Yeah. And we have built at Vardin this thing called Collaboration Kit, and that's now what we're going to use. So one of the features in Collaboration Kit is a kind of a full stack component to use the terminology uh, that, that Jonas wrote about uh, in the morning, uh, yesterday morning, I mean. Uh, and that full stack component is collaboration avatar group. So it's an avatar group, a group of avatars, basically just images of the people and collaboration because it kind of, it automatically syncs between different, different users that have the same thing open. So, so how, do, how do I do that? You can start by just creating collaboration avatar group Component yeah. instance somewhere there. So in the somewhere in the constructor. Yeah, put mm. it maybe yeah. in the in the beginning. In the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So what what was it called? Collaboration. Co collaboration avatar group. Avatar. So we are looking for this one. Yep. Okay. And. So this is my group. Yes, and just create a new instance. Uh, actually, you might want to do that as a instance field instead. Okay because we're going to need it from, from the outside also. So putting yep. it here. And new instance. Yep. Need to give it some things in the constructor also. Yes. Yeah, import. No, nope. no, not import that. It. And then uh, it takes actually, first it takes the local it, yeah. user kind of thing. That's who am I? Because everyone else will see that. Uh, and did you get it to autocomplete things oh, for you? Oh, this is no. my ID is misbehaving. Yeah, it's, it, it knows that you're live on. on yeah, it apparently it. So we create the field first. Okay, yeah, well, that, that might help. Yeah. And then we go back uh, to our constructor. constructor and yep. we have, uh, what do we have here? Yes. User info. L l l user info and, and then a topic ID. Okay. So uh, let's start with the user info. I should have this somewhere. No. Oh, well, I hope I get it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, um, this application, uh, it's slightly enhanced from what you get from startwarden.com. If you enable authentication there, it's got an authenticated user spring service for actually finding the authenticated user. So you can uh, inject that through the constructor first. Um, as a parameter? Yep. Okay. So, uh, I mean, it, we're using modern Spring stuff here, so you can just put things in the Authenticated and user. It's, it's auto-wired. So this one? Yep. So... Uh, yes. And then that, to that one, I have <coughs> already added a getter for getting the same info as, as a user info oh. object. Oh. Okay. So, so I'll, I'll get it from here. Yeah. It, it's a method on that one. Dot, uh, get, get that user yes, info. exactly. Okay, what's the difference here? So authenticated user is the... Uh, authenticated user that's kind of directly mapping to the uh, entity stored in the user database. 
and, and this then, is then this is just the collaboration the same thing into kind of the collaboration kits dto for, oh. for keeping track of users okay perfect then the second parameter <coughs> is yeah the topic I, id I, uh, I already used empty string yeah you Good. already used empty string well, well let's start with empty string okay. yes yeah. uh, and then you can uh, just on the bottom of the constructor add that one also to the view view the somewhere view. yeah before the form before so, the form so we get it kind of up upper so right corner even so put it here yep and let's see so now we should have something somewhere yes. hey uh, for some there. reason I'm there, but okay, you were just slow to redeploy. So uh -huh. now you actually see now when I actually when I close it, then I disappear from the no, nice fr from the list, and then when I'm there, then then it appears again. And now we have a bug there also. Interesting. Uh, but we have we yeah, have okay we have two lives here. <laughs> but <laughs> the thing here is now we use just empty string as the name of the kind of topic in which this collaborates. So even if I open a different entity, then I'm still also seen as visible and I see Sami as visible because we're kind of... Ah, so we are on the there. same topic, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. we need to make one more change. Uh, actually, you can there so set this null one. as the topic there, so then it's kind of not active at all. That's safe. And yeah. then if you scroll down no a little bit yeah. into the before enter method, uh, there, so uh, yeah, there on that line, we actually kind of we got the contact, contact ID yeah. from the URL, and then based on that URL, we can create a topic ID that is unique for everyone looking at this contact, and you set that as the topic for the for the group. So yeah, group so dot set topic, topic and, and uh, then for instance contact slash, and then give it the contact ID. Uh, like a string, yeah. yeah. So in that way, we kind of namespacing things a little bit there. And uh, contact ID. Yes. Okay. We got that variable there. So now. <laughs> If you save that, then we should have it so that only the people with the same contact open will will, will see the same thing. So now I'm still in the first yeah. one. And now when I join that one, okay. Uh, uh, try refreshing. You might have something out of sync. Yeah. Yeah. And now know. if I leave that one and open another one, then I only see that I'm the only one looking at this one. And then okay, so this makes more <laughs> more sense. This would really help in that case because they could have seen my information, and and seeing seeing that you know Lena is also here and Jan is now editing the same information. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's just seeing who is present and and just by controlling the topics you can control exactly kind of who is in the group that that is kind of shown in, the, in this avatar group. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so the. Do, do you have any more requirements? I I, ha I had more ideas for this one. So so because I was using this Google Slides and it also had a chat here. Yep. So of course we, will, you know, if they could have chatted with each other, maybe having me my chat there in their chat that would be really cool. Yep. As as my experience that they could have seen that hey I saw that Lena is already asking you this information, I can continue from here, so, yep. so uh, the hand, uh, handover. Yeah, I also think kind of in many practical cases, kind of people uses, using applications, otherwise they quite often discuss on Slack or Teams or something, kind of what are you doing, what, are, what, what should I be doing and so on. But then you lose the context, but if yeah, you can okay. have kind of one chat for each entity in your application, then you have kind of, it's always in the context of that specific. So can, I have, can, I, can I have it? You want to implement it? <laughs> yes, I, I want, good, I want good. to. Yeah, the good thing is that this, oh, this we, chatting... We do it. I'm always closing, you, the, closing that one. This is also one of the things that has a built-in high-level full-stack component in Collaboration Kit. So what we need to do is that... Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm making sure that I want to have it in the context, so on, on the same chat for each yeah. contact basically yeah, not, so, not so, so for so the not for the whole application yeah so so what um, we again need to do is that the chat is set to the topic id okay so co contact slash the contact id for instance i mean it's it's just a string it, it it there's kind of collaboration kit doesn't do interpret the string in any way it's just everyone who uses that string it 
is kind of collaborating with each other. Right, so if, if the magic happens through this yeah. topic ID, yeah. Yep, so if you go up again to the constructor where we created the um, avatar group, yep. so there Here you can hand. also create a collaboration message list. Okay. Uh, is that list? Okay, that li list is good. So yeah. new, new collaboration message group. Mes uh, message list. Message I mean. list. Yes. This looks, looks and promising. And it takes exactly the same constructor parameters. So the user I'll info and the, field. and uh -huh. the topic ID. Okay. But again, here we, we don't know the topic ID already in the constructor. So, so we'll we get the user info and uh, it's safe to set null. Yeah, if you set null, then it's kind of inactive. It doesn't even try to collaborate with anyone. Okay, so it's kind of turned off yep. in, a, in a way. Okay. Yep. So and now we have we a list. Add this to the layout also, maybe to the bottom now. Yeah, it makes most sense, like on the side or on in the yeah, bottom. Well, yeah, well, we're not UI designers, we just put it at the bottom. Yeah, I'm just a Java <laughs> developer here. <laughs> yep. So in here. Yep. Yeah, okay, let's put it there. Yep. And then we also need to add, because this is just actually a list of messages that someone has added in some way. We also need to add a new, another component a collaboration message input, which is actually a field that allows you to submit messages to that topic. Ah, okay, so this is only the list of messages. Yeah, because not, okay. sometimes you want to put them in different places of the UI, sometimes you just want to get the messages from some bot or something like that. Do I need another field for that? Or? Uh, that one is only used locally, so you can just even create it inline in the add call. In here, okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, so new collaboration <coughs> message input. Message input. Yes, and then it takes the collaboration message list as a parameter. So that and that's the, that's the component. Yeah, yeah. then they got hook, hooked up with each other. Was it called list? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. And then we need to go to the before enter and set the topic ID to that one also. In this case, we can okay. use exactly the same thing. So you can even pull that out as a variable, the topic ID that you to the group <coughs> or then you just duplicate the code uh, yeah yeah set topic and but it's good to have the same contact as the topic i mean so it, it doesn't matter because they yeah. are still kind of independent of each other but just yeah, to keep okay. it kind of this is very explicit keep it i can now, now i can change it to something else if i yeah. think that you know that. yeah so if we save that we should hopefully have a chat yes and it should hopefully be <laughs> be Let's go, to, let's go so it, to, let's go to. It looks like we've got a chat. If I say hello, ah. then you also see it. Great. And if you say hello, then I also see it. So yep, there we have a chat implemented in three lines of code. Hmm, impressive. I can do this. Yep. Then can we do something more? We can do <laughs> What do you want to do? Um, let's see. So. The, the one thing that, um, that of course hit me that the, if, if they are trying to do it at the same time, so this is probably a very common problem, that you actually try to edit the same data at the same time two users are accessing it. So who's gonna win? Yeah. So I came up with this fancy idea. You can, I don't know if you can see my, my notes there, but you know, if Leif is editing, I can click wait. So I'm not interfering his editing. He can do the editing. And uh, once, once Leif is done, uh, it, it changes back to edit button. I can, I can go there and edit it again. Yeah, so only one person can have or a four open at the same yeah, time. Yeah, well, if you're editing, I'm not editing. If I'm editing, you're not editing. But, yeah. uh, and and maybe, maybe some kind of notification that, hey, now. Yeah, we, we can do that. It's a little bit more kind of, a little bit more code since we don't have a built-in feature specifically for this, but <coughs> we, we can do something along those lines. But this makes sense to you? Uh, sometimes, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> actually, uh, there was this one, one, one customer that we, that we talked with, they had, they had, they, they were building some kind of application for processing applications, so it was an application application. Uh, they kind of they had lots of agents that their job was just to process as many applications as possible. It was kind of people applying for for some grants or something like that, and and they had the kind of problem that 
these agents, they were really competitive. They weren't kind of, I, I, I will win the kind of processor of the week award by, by being the one who has processed the most applications. <laughs> and, and they had the problem that whenever a new application arrived, there might be multiple people of those agents trying to start to, to process that one at the same time. And then actually, if we go back to the application, okay. then they got the fun problem that we can also see here. So oh, yeah, yeah, like a, like a... That if you know, now start editing, and I start editing. Okay, so we are and both then editing. I make some changes and I save, and then if you make some changes and save, you can just guess yeah. what happens there. Oh, oh we okay. get an optimistic lot exception. Well, this is, this is, <laughs> well, this, this is sometimes fine. So yeah. So yeah. now, but in, now I need to, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, but I, I want fine, to be, but, yeah. But the problem here was kind of, these people, they spent, each one of their own spent kind of 30 minutes checking all the details in that application. And then they kind of made the decision kind of, should this be granted or not? And then they clicked the button and then that 30 minutes yeah. of was lost because someone else had already done it. Yeah, but nothing long data. I don't want to lose yeah, like this. But yeah. they, they, they kind of, they, yeah. they, they lost a whole lot. So uh, I'll copy this to some, some clipboard yeah. and, and come back and yeah. No, but no, anyway, anyway, no, no. So yeah, we can do better. Yeah. yeah. W with them, we kind of built this solution that, well, when one person starts edit, start processing the application, then nobody else can do it while they are still active on it mm. to, to prevent those things from happening. Yeah. So instead of, so now I need to cancel it, but uh, instead of this edit, it could somehow lock it so that yeah. I don't accidentally yeah, edit so, it. So that w w one is editing. I mean, yeah. It's maybe not the best UI design, but simplest here, just kind of, let's just disable the button when someone else is editing. Right, okay. Yep. Yeah, good, let's do that. good, good for testing this out at least. Yep. So, so where uh, do we go? There's hmm. a couple of steps to this. Uh, first, we need to have something, because now we can't use an existing UI component like the collaboration message list or the collaboration avatar group. But instead, we need to use a low-level mechanism. Uh, it's, it's a presence manager. So this is kind of the backing data behind the avatar group. Uh, because, I mean, what you have when you have locking is kind of, it's a list of people. The first one in the queue is the one that actually has the lock acquired. Everyone else is waiting for their turn. Mm. So that's kind of the same as just kind of people arrive to this avatar group one after the other. The one who kind of arrived first is the one that, Abstract that is there. So, so yeah. we, we can reuse the same data abstraction. It's a little bit messy, but, but it, it's doable. So we need to okay. first then by start uh, creating this uh, presence manager instance. Uh, okay. Should I have it here? Uh, you should create it. Actually, I realized the presence manager doesn't have a set topic, so we need to actually create it in the... Uh, in the navigation method before enter when we actually get the ID. So yeah, so this method is called whenever user actually arrives and yeah. on the view. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So here we can, um, we can create a new presence manager. Should I create it only when the back backend contact is available? Or? Yeah, because otherwise yeah. this just shows an error message and, and goes somewhere else. Okay. So yeah, here we can create a presence manager and it takes so some familiar parameters. So there is presence manager yes yep uh, i don't know what to call uh, it actually we need to have this as an instance field also so, also. so we can move it out of the method yeah okay and yep new presence manager and it takes the same and it takes a little bit different parameters because one of the magic things uh, with collaboration kit is what you're actually doing is that you're listening to uh, updates from other users, which means no, that basically it's, it's a static somewhere in Java terms. And when you're listening on a static, you got memory leaks. Mm -hmm. uh, the magic thing with, with Collaboration Kit is that every time you listen to something, it's tied to a component instance. Immediately when that component instance is detached in any way, then all the listeners are removed from that static data. And in that way, we avoid all the memory leaks because whenever the user navigates away, collaboration kit takes care of removing all those listeners. So 
so that w no memory would be leaking. Yeah, so it can be any component basically. It doesn't have to be a view or anything yeah, it, like that. It yeah. can be any component, and as long yeah. as that component is attached. So in this case, this is a very good component to use. This is a good component. <laughs> Uh, and then we get need the local user, so maybe if you ah. extract that in the constructor, store it in a in an instance uh, field. Yes, so we have, let's call it user, and uh, yeah. and then we have the topic there. Yeah, and okay. there we can actually actually here we should avoid using the same topic ID yeah, because no. presence shares data with presence. So if we would have these, if we would use the same topic ID, then we would share with the avatar group, and that would be problematic. So I'll, I'll store uh, You can actually do what user dot uh, as user info. Yeah, okay, so only the user info is needed here. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's the same user info is needed by all, all the collaboration okay. kit parts. So it's now it's stored in the view. Yep. Okay, and the topic, and the topic ID. So here we need to use something different. So okay. this is kind of edit slash the contact ID. Okay, <coughs> so we are editing slash. Yep, uh, we're not done yet. Uh, because that would have been easy. Now we just have the kind of backing data, but now we actually need to do something sensible with it. Uh, mm. First thing we can actually do already in this place is let's make it so that uh, make it so that when when we get here, we also say to this presence manager, should we be marked as present in it? In it? Should we register ourselves as a present there or are we just listening for updates? Uh, and we can do that based on whether the edit boolean is true or not. If you're editing, then we set ourselves as active, otherwise we are kind of not there yet. So you can just do presence manager dot, actually, uh, you don't even need the if because we just yeah, pass the okay. boolean there. Okay. Presence manager dot mark as present and then just pass the edit boolean there. Mark as present and and whenever editing. Yeah, because we already have yeah. that there okay. for other purposes. Yeah. Uh, so far we haven't done anything in the UI. Yeah. So the last step until we can see something is uh, let's add just a div for kind of showing the the status that we have right now. So uh, should I add it here? Put that as an instance field again somewhere, create it in the constructor and add it somewhere in the so some debug info or yeah. okay status maybe is the uh, name okay. of it. Just a div. Just a div. Okay, let's do it. Um, let's create a field. Yes, and then add it also. Oh yeah, let's put it somewhere <laughs> before the, list, before the list. Yeah, so status goes here. Fine. And we're still not done. No, we haven't put anything in the view. No, we yeah. need to also update the div. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> uh, we need to go, uh, where do we find the... Status? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we need to go the other way around. We need to start with the presence right. manager. So uh, presence manager has, you can add a listener to it. Okay. Get updates whenever someone joins or leaves. I see. So this dot presence dot um, set presence handler. Set presence handler. Yes. That's and, and that thing it receives a kind of event object. Okay. And uh, open a block there. Yes. Uh, in that event object, we can get user from the event. So yes. Yep. And and then we need to manually keep track of who is there and who is not. So we need to have a array list as an instance field. And then we just add this user to the field. Sorry, now, now you lost me. Uh, I we need, need to create an uh, array list. Array list. Yes, uh, not here. We need to have it outside, but we need to add the user to that list. So just. So should I have another instance field? Yes, oh. all the instance fields. Oh, great. <laughs> this dot so Q, if you want to type very difficult. Edit Q or so. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's about okay, it. That's <laughs> <laughs> Q. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> just a new array list. Okay. Array list. Let's use that. Yes. And do I need a type for this? Well, you need it on the instance field. So let's make it as user info. Okay. That's again the, the collaboration engine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we are now we have a QU. Q Q Q Q Q Q Q Q Q yeah. Yes. 
That's good. And then in that presence handler, we add the add user it. to the queue. Okay, so we have edit queue, queue, add yes, user. So quick. Ah, okay. <laughs> yep, and then also we here we return a handler, a callback that is called when the user disappears. So return a, just a kind of a lambda that takes zero arguments and uh, open a block there. Okay. And in that block we do edit you that remove with the same user. No, this, lo this looks fancy now. You mean complicated? Oh no, I need to need to have it as final or something. Uh, it's effectively final. Uh, I don't see what's wrong there. Yeah, okay, now I saw what was wrong there. Yep. Now we are almost ready to go. The <laughs> last thing is to actually update the div also. So in uh, here. Uh, yeah, whenever we have added or removed something, we just call a method that updates the div. So update status or whatever. So yeah. I like just this. create that as a method somewhere. Okay. Um, and what we want to do there is we want to get the div and actually we can we can do a yeah set text there. Set text. And That's then we do fine. a really pretty one liner. So we, we have the queue. Yes. Uh, edit queue. Yeah. And then we stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. And then we do map to get yeah. just the name out of it. All right, so this is user info and... Yeah, user info to... you. Yeah, you can actually do a method reference, get name. Yeah, I was yes. thinking. Yeah. And then we do to list. Okay, to list. And then finally to stream on the list. Hmm, okay. Don't do this in production. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, to stream here. So. <laughs> yep. Uh, I mean, this is just debug info, so we see what's going on. Last nice. thing to do is uh, in the handler, we should also call the update method when when we remove something. So in, in here method, also, yeah. yeah. Now yeah. we are ready to go. Now we are ready to go. Hopefully, this was quite a oh. mouthful and it's not done yet. Ah, okay, but let's see. So now, if I edit, yes, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Uh, no, no, there we go. Now, now, now I see on my screen yeah. that yes, some is, is in the queue and now maybe you can edit. not in the queue for some reason? You can't yeah. come, come to my queue. Something is wrong. Hey, uh, what I was thinking that we actually create uh, the presence manager here when only when the contact. Yeah, but that's, that's where we are. But we can create a new presence manager on every enter. That's that's fine. Uh, now I'm lost. Interesting. We we have a bug here. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but I can see myself if yeah, anything. That, that, that's, the, that, that's the interesting thing. <laughs> uh, we got the user info. Am I logged in as the right user? Yes, I am. No, I'm still there. Yes. Yeah, because we, we didn't remove you. So uh, if you refresh, then you hopefully disappear. Yes. Yes. We did. But why am I not showing there? You're not. You're not used to. Hmm. Should we cheat a little bit? We can cheat. We yes. Can cheat. Yes. If you if you know how, uh, <laughs> I, I have no idea how. how. <laughs> because I know how to use Git. Uh -huh. <laughs> so let's just. If you find the right commit from Git and reset oh, to that, then, then we'll just look at what it's supposed to do. I'm not good with Git. So, but, or do we have it here? Uh, we don't have it there, no. Okay. Uh, but it's in. So somewhere in the Git. Yes, if you do, do just a. Uh, git log for the master branch because you are now on the base one branch that doesn't have it. Is it master really? Master. No, main, sorry. Uh, I was thinking you shouldn't have. Yes, and then we have add locking one down. 
uh, that one. So get. What have you done here? Scroll up a little bit. Add blocking okay. that commit ID. So yes, and then you get get reset to that one. Okay. Get reset. We reset. Reset. Now we gotta. Yep. Oh, we need to. Stash. We we need a, a hard reset. Get reset dash dash hard. Okay. Are we good? Good. Now now it works. <laughs> Hopefully. No, well, that was really cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Let's well. see if it works first, and then we will kind of figure out what goes on there. Okay. So, yeah. So let's see. Yeah, no. need to. Do we have the updated code there? Maybe, yeah. maybe not. I'll I'll just make sure that it's 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 deploying. It's doing something. Yep. Yeah, I got I got it already here. You have it already. <coughs> yep. Yeah. So now, yes. So it now, wh when you started editing, for me the edit button is grayed out. I can't start editing, but I can say that yeah, I want to wait for it. And then we see that now I'm also in the queue, but I'm at the end of the queue. And then if you now stop editing, so you save or cancel, whichever okay, way you want. Okay, I cancel here. Then I'm the first in the queue and automatically it made me the editor now. So now you are actually <laughs> editing. Now, yeah. Okay. So, so that's kind of, that's how it was supposed to work. Uh, ah. In the code, I mean, we did most of the things, uh, if you open up, uh, there's a queue updated method that is the kind of relevant thing if you scroll down to line 150. One question. Yep. yep. I'm sorry, sir, as you were saying, the commit ID reset and expression is grayed out in your editor? Sorry, uh, refresh. Uh, after saving. Um, after yeah, we are sharing the screen. Yeah, but after when you save. Yeah. Yes, because every save redeploys, and this is now set up so that every redeploy resets it, uh, all the data. Well, when you see the new data, you see we yeah 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 that's true yeah. So yeah, we had this queue this updated one. method. Yeah, so that's where all the magic happens. So, so this I should have written. Th this you should have written. Yes. I see. Yeah. So, so basically, what we do is we check from the queue who's first. Then we see, do we have the lock if that's the same user that we are? And then we see, has anyone locked? But just by seeing, do we have any, anything that is first? And then we just set the enable bu button based on that. And also set the, the checkbox for, for waiting based on that. And then we have the checkbox hooked up to also add us as listeners. And finally, we have the kind of final thing that if we have the lock, but we are not actually in editing mode, then we go to editing mode and okay. there we have it. Okay, but no notification yet. Yeah, but let's skip the notification because we spent some time All fixing right. that bug. That I mean, the notification is really simple. We actually, <laughs> let's add the notification. <laughs> we just there in edit contact, you just do notification that show. Here. Uh, the jump back one step. Okay. So there, when you call that, because I mean, Notifications are also one of the things, it really depends on the application logic, when and how you want to show notifications. Do you just want to do notifications okay, yeah, so show, or do you, for instance, want to use the push notification support that, that is in preview in, in Vardin 24.2. So there's, again, no, no built-in support for kind of notification, so corporation notification group or whatever, but, but it's, it's basically not needed. So yeah. it's, it's just a notification. Yeah, yeah. I, I got it. Yeah. Nothing to do with the collaboration itself. Yes. Uh, okay. Let's, let's, let's see. Let's, let's see. see if you've got any other requirements for us. Well, we have I, I, I have the notification. I, I was actually thinking the web notification. So you, I, I, do, I don't need to have the application open when I do this. Yeah. So. But we, we now did a simpler web notification. Yeah, this was, this was simple. But you could do something like this, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fine for now. So <laughs> I will try it myself. So. Yep. Um, all right. Um, yeah, so this screenshot I saw on our web page. On our so, web page? Yes. So you you it, want it to have multiple users editing the field at the same time without things blowing up. Yes. 
because uh, you know that would really make sense that they could actually edit it at the same time yeah. and not you know minding that they are you know not taking the lock or releasing the lock or anything like that but just could be in there and yeah well we can do that it's simple okay I, I kind of anticipated that this is where we would be heading so yeah let's jump let's to the code let's jump to the code yeah uh, actually we don't want to undo all the locking things here, so there's another view that already has the starting points for us. Another so view. there's a, okay. a collaborative panel, that one. This one. Yep, and then we need to also in the application navigate to the So what's going on here? Contacts. Uh, this is just the same starting point that we had after adding the uh, chat and the avatar. Okay. So this is the same code I, I wrote, but more beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I see. Uh, so we, we, we want to make this collaborative now, and it's, it's very, very easy, almost. Uh, we have mm. the binder now uh, in the constructor. If you scroll up a little bit, we create a new binder. We yes. just change that to a new collaboration binder. This one? Yep. Only the instance or, or uh, the... We, 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 we need a couple of other things also, but let's start there. And then it also needs a topic ID in the constructor. So let's just... No, not a topic ID, but a local user. Uh, okay, so uh, it's the second parameter. Okay, okay. So let's put it as a second parameter. Yes, and then you can change the type of the instance. Also, also, also yeah. this one. Uh, because uh, when we set up, okay, when you use binder, you do kind of read bean, but that would overwrite what someone else is already editing. So we need mm. to actually configure things in a slightly different way. And now because the way this is set up, we need to change it in a couple of places. Okay. So, so. Uh, uh, if you go to the save method, it's line 124. 124. Yep, uh, 120 actually. So there we got read bean there. Yes. Yeah, so we can't use read bean. Uh, in the, uh, this is when we saved. We need to kind of just get the latest thing because in theory the database might have changed or the backend okay. logic might have changed something. So uh, change that just to reset instead. So now I'm not sure what I'm doing. But yeah, uh, now you're just following instructions. Because okay, I'll, you, I'll do that. <laughs> you shouldn't use read bean by default. So we have deprecated and that may, made it throw exceptions. But in some cases you still want to do that. You want to actually make all the collaborators have that value and then you use oh, the reset okay. method yeah. instead. But the real okay. magic is if you scroll down a little bit to the very bottom. All right. Yes, update form. So his, here's where we actually initialize things. So there we can actually, instead of reading B, mm. uh, actually outside of, remove that line. All together. Yes. All the. Yes, and outside of the if instead, let's just leave the if there. The compiler complains, but it's all right. Mm. So here we do binder.set topic. And you can just guess what we should use as a topic ID there. Uh, mm, edit. It doesn't matter, but just use contact.get ID. Let's also use there. that. Um, contact get ID. Yes, and then it needs a second parameter, and here's where, ah. where the magic happens. Uh, this is a zero args uh, lambda because Again. only the first time someone opens editing for this, then we need to populate the data. Th th then the collaboration binder should read the data. So then it runs this callback. So here we in this case, just, just return the contact that we have some, somewhere already. <coughs> yes. And now uh, we yes. should be. Now we are done. Now we're done. Yes. Should we check? We, we can try running it, but I'm, I'm quite but sure. But this is not the same view now yeah, that no, I was no having. Yeah, now we need to, I actually have already opened it, so you can go to the collab contacts instead and, and use open the, the first one. Okay, let's open the first one. Yes, we are and here. then if we both start editing, then now if I oh, pose nice. a field, you see kind of where, where, where you are is. exactly yeah. and immediately if I change something in the first field then you will also see that and in that way and I can I can also edit it right oh, yeah well I'm, I'm not even edi editing that one anymore but oh, in that way right. you can kind of edit the things this is, together this is exactly good yeah. yeah I mean 
you need to do a couple of more things since mm -hmm. as a user it will be quite confusing if I'm editing something and the moment when I click save you would also edit something mm, because yeah. then I might save your incomplete changes. So probably we should also, but we're definitely not going to do that today. We should Don't make it so that instead of saying, it, it kind of previews your changes. You can see one more time that, yeah, these are the things I expected and, and then actually do the save. I tried to communicate with you. So yeah, well, I'm, I'm not listening. <laughs> yeah, okay. Can we help, it, help there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... But this was exactly what I was thinking, you know, in that use case that could actually make the, make the end user experience way better. Yep. So even though that they are probably doing their best there as, a, as, a, as trying to assist me, they, they still didn't have the tools for that. So. Yep. yep. So that's our almost successful attempt and making <laughs> things really easily collaborative. Four out of five worked all right, so I think that's still quite good. <laughs> so, this. Yep. So, maybe it's your time if you have some questions. Yep. There is one question on the last demo. Was that implement in the box? Or uh, choose both types of content? You can type in the same field, but it's last right wins. Okay. So, it's kind of. We have thought that, yeah, we should also make it like in Google Docs that you can actually kind of have two cursors and so on. But we realized that usually in business applications, since you have kind of many different fields instead, and if you just see that one user is now has the cursor in this field, then, then you understand to stay out of it. Yeah, yeah that, that's and like a... Yeah, yeah. No, for, for a rich text editor, you would want that, but not when you have 50 different fields in a form. I think I saw someone else trying to almost <coughs> raise a hand. No, don't be shy. No more questions? No, all right. Let's okay. wrap up. Yes, let's wrap so up. We have seen five different, I would call them kind of UI patterns for collaboration and how to implement them. So we had the avatar, we had the chat, we had the locks, we had notifications, and we have actually editing things together. And I think the key thing here is that these are just building blocks. It's always up to you in your application to think, how can these be combined? Many, for instance, say that, well, we don't have a use case where people actually want to edit things together, but it might still be good to, for instance, have that they can chat with each other, especially if that chat is kind of persistent also uh, kind of persistent so that you see it later also not only kind of if you are two people looking at the same thing at the same time also for instance you can put the avatars in a grid so that you can see kind of who is editing each item and and it will depends on the use case but anyways based on our experience with these five kind of building blocks you can put together different kinds of collaborative experiences yeah yeah and, and I think that especially in the, these uh, customer service cases it very much makes sense because you they they, they are multi-channel anyway so you don't know where the customers are coming in so if you have such cases then something like that might make sense to in your in your application but um, try it out I think uh, yeah there is this human factor everywhere so <laughs> so yep which we can't remove, but we can do the technology better for, so. Actually speaking of the human factor, mm. you remember the application application? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what happened in it? Mm. Locking wasn't a good idea. <laughs> because these agents, they are competitive. They found out that, hmm, I should just open everything that is, that is <laughs> kind of not yet processed. I will lock out everyone else. I can do them kind of in my own pace. No one else can process anything and I get all the kind of benefits from that. So it turned out that maybe that wasn't the right solution for that case, but you never know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe that's good, good to end there. So yep. build, build applications for humans. <laughs> yep. All right. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for joining us.